All right, guys. So King James has gone for a slam dunk on CNN. And I'm not talking about LeBron. I'm talking about James O'Keefe from Project Veritas, who has exposed CNN with the CNN tapes. Okay. And if you guys don't know what the CNN tapes are, they are basically uh, recordings of the 9 a.m. meetings between the producers, the executives, the people at CNN planning how they're going to talk about their propaganda. And they've released probably about three or four of them at this point, right? And a lot of people are calling these tapes innocuous. They're saying it's a nothing burger. But I think those people who are saying that are missing the bigger point. I'm all about strategy, okay? When you can get access to the thinking, the brains, the CEO of CNN and how they're going to present their messaging, that is very, very, very powerful stuff. And even CNN agrees with it because CNN's PR team has came out and said they may have James O'Keefe arrested. They said they might report it to law enforcement. This is how salty CNN was for recording a phone call on live stream with Jeff Zucker, again, the CEO of CNN, in which Jeff Zucker, of course, tried to hang up on Project Veritas. So this is kind of a big deal. In my opinion, and I'm going to explain to you why understanding how these media companies come up with their propaganda and how they formulate their goals and their agenda is important. But before we get into that, my name is Greg Foreman and you're watching a black conservative perspective. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective, a.k.a. a leftist worst nightmare. You can also follow me on Twitter at G Foreman BCP. Remember, guys, if you're looking for eco friendly solution to flushable wipes, check out Ashi at AshiHome.com. Great gift for the holidays. 10 percent of proceeds. Are donated to toys for tots all right guys so these cnn tapes there's been about three or four of them the first one was a recording between jeff zucker and project veritas which is done on live stream and then there was another one talking about how they were going to frame trump's transition as the cause of a potential 9-11 during a so-called biden administration and then like the second one was them blasting trump and the republicans talking about how you know, Trump's claims were outlandish and that he's unhinged and talking about going after Lindsey Graham. And then it's like a third one. They're talking about how Tucker Carson apparently is racist and how Trump gets all his news from Tucker Carson and calls him the racist hour on Fox News, which I, I really don't understand how they even come up with that one that T Tucker Carson is somehow some type of racist. But what I want to focus on in this video is how the media tries to distribute propaganda and tries to take advantage of people that they think are uneducated and one of the claims they made particularly the one about president trump holding up the transition from biden how that could possibly cause another 9-11 they're literally using that in order to potentially blame trump if something like that happens without giving you all the facts it is purely propaganda and the reason why you know is because if you look up 9-11 and transition, there's going to be a ton of hit pieces out there against President Trump blasting him for not giving Biden access to the GSA funds. And them basically saying that Trump could cause another 9-11. Now, what they fail to leave out a lot of these articles and news stations like CNN is the fact that Bill Clinton back in 2000 refused to give GSA funds to George W. Bush because of the current legal battles going on in the election and not knowing if George W. Bush would actually win. And he did not get access to the GSA funds until like December 14th. Now, what ended up happening was is that because of the so-called late transition, or at least that's how the historians like to look back on it, it took about eight months or so for the Bush administration to fill uh, the national security and advisor roles because of security clearances taking so long. 
So off the top, guys, them trying to blame Trump on a potential 9-11 is also them low-key blaming Bill Clinton for the actual 9-11. That's how stupid these news networks are. That's how much Trump derangement syndrome they have. But furthermore, they also leave out the fact that George W. Bush actually in 2004 put laws in place or helped push laws that would help prevent another 9-11 and help smooth the transition process to where national security isn't so directly tied or reliant on a smooth transition process. One of these acts was the National Security Intelligence Reform Act of 2004, which established uh, the Director of National Intelligence, the position that John Ratcliffe currently has. It also established the National Counterterrorism System and the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board. The Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act of 2004 also provided for pre-inaugural security clearances for those persons who might serve in top foreign policy positions. Major party nominees could also request clearance for members of their transition teams that needed access to classified information. This is one of the things that George Bush had put into place to help strengthen our national security. Also, what they failed to mention is that during the Obama administration, he also enacted reforms to help with pre-election presidential transitioning. For example, the Pre-Election Presidential Transition Act of 2010 established that certain transition assistance would go to major party nominees before the election. It recognized that presidential nominees had long been conducting informal pre-election transition planning, even without the aid of the General Service Administration. The act also sought to institutionalize many of the practices that the George W. Bush administration took on its own volition. It authorized the creation of a transition coordinating council composed a high level executive branch officials chosen by the president as well as an agency transition uh, directors council. The Presidential Transition uh, Improvements Act of 2015 required presidents to create these entities. The act also mandated that representatives from both major campaigns serve on these committees in an advisory capacity. By September 15th, uh, agency heads must designate qualified career employees to serve in acting capacity during the transition for each critical non-career position in the agency. By November 1st, the campaigns must complete memorandum of understanding with the General Service Administration. So there's already been reforms in place by George W. Bush, by the Obama administration, basically things that are bipartisan that have been worked on by both parties to ease the transition even before the election occurs. So national security is not as vulnerable as it used to be during the transition process. And this is the type of stuff that the media fails to mention. They fail to give you proper context in terms of what they're actually talking about because it is true the intelligence officials do say that the george bush transition and it taking longer than usual may have contributed to 9 11. however it is important to understand that we've attempted to fix that problem but no the media fails to provide proper context and educate their viewers and they literally just roll with the headline of let's play up Trump potentially calls another 9-11. A shock title. Totally based off trying to fear monger people and trying to exaggerate the importance of the presidential transition process. Now, is the presidential transition process important? Yes, of course it's important. But the fact is, is that President Trump has given Biden access to the GSA funds. And I think Biden is also receiving the president's daily report or brief already. So it's not like Biden's not getting any information. Now, whether or not Biden's actually going to be able to use any of that stuff, who knows? And these recordings were recorded, I think, before President Trump actually allowed that to happen. But again, the point remains the same. These media companies exaggerate. They spend propaganda. They try to paint certain people that they don't like to be the worst people in the world, despite the actual facts. I think I heard Bill, Bill O'Reilly talking about this and him saying that at Fox News, 
he had nobody telling him what he could say and he actually could have his own opinion which i kind of believe because i mean he made fox millions of dollars literally and was the biggest man on cable television so i don't think cnn has anybody like that i think everybody at cnn is pretty controlled and i think that these audio tapes kind of show exactly what's going on at cnn so i don't necessarily think that this is a nothing burger per se i do think it is incredibly useful to understand how cnn operates internally and, and to keep in mind that when you're watching cnn that everything they're telling you is literally controlled propaganda that person that's talking to you might not necessarily be giving you their opinion they may be giving you the opinion of the network they may be giving you the opinion of jeff zucker the ceo so i think this is big and i'm loving every single leak let me know what you guys think do you think that this is a nothing burger or do you think that this is big let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace